Hi, my name is Ali Shesova from BridgeShare Digital. In this video, we're going to talk about the high performance current sense circuitry that we need in uh, current mode applications. And we're gonna talk about current transformers and how we design these circuits. When you design a current mode power supply, Within the control loop, there's a parameter that is called current gain. You somehow need to measure the current, and that is a parameter within the control loop. Now, for low power power supplies, current gain is actually exactly the same as your current sense resistor. So if you call that current sense resistor R sense, and this is going to your controller IC, if you imagine for simplicity, let's say this is one ohms, if you've got one amp flowing down here, then you get one volts here, right? And therefore your current gain is one volt per amp. In other words, every time an amp goes through this resistor, you get one volt appearing on the current sense pin of your device. As you can imagine, if the power is any higher, you're not going to be able to use this setup because of the power losses within here. If you had one amps of RMS current with one ohms, you dissipate a watt. And of course, you can't do that. And that is why we use something called a current sense transformer. It looks uh, typically something like, like this. Um, and effectively is a transformer. You usually have one turn on the primary. Um, that is just a track of your PCB, goes to a transformer. And then you have got, let's say between typically 50 or 100 turns um, on the secondary. You put a diode here, that is usually a fast, a small fast diode, maybe a 4148. And then you have your sense resistor here. R sense, and sometimes it's called a burden resistor, R burden. Now, if you imagine you've now got a transformer with a turns ratio of one to 100, yeah? You've got one ohms here still, but now you have got, if one amp is flowing here, what's appearing here is one amps divided by 100, and therefore the power dissipation on this will be uh, very, very low, but your volts per amp will be still exactly the same. So you have your R sense divided by, well, multiplied by the turns ratio. In our case, the turns ratio was one to a hundred, and that is what we now call the uh, current gain. And if you're calculating your control loop by hand, you need this value. If you're using an automated tool such as WDS, you still this value. So how do we go about designing the circuit? Let us then draw this circuit again. Here you've got your primary. Here you've got your secondary. You've got a diode and a burden resistor. Uh, the job of the diode to allow the uh, core to reset, there's an excellent paper from TI with the, uh, in the description, um, so you can have a look at, 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 at how it operates. Here I've got my primary. Um, let's say I measure a switch current and my current looks something like this in amps. And then here I've got my burden resistor, sometimes it's called R sense, sometimes, sometimes it's called R burden. And the job of this is to convert this current in amps into a voltage. And of course, the voltage that appears across here should be an exact replica of the current that we have. So what you will get in theory is something like this if you have a one volts per amp uh, current gain. So here you have one volts, which is representing on the pin of your IC. This goes to the pin of your IC one amps. Often you add an extra capacitor here, very small in order to take out some high frequency noise because current mode power supplies are very sensitive to noise. At least that is the theory. You will find often, uh, especially on lower current power supplies, whereby the actual current looks like this, but the measure current that you see here, it's flattened out like this.
There's a couple of issues with this. One, our current measurement is not quite right. Um, we expect to be getting a peak of one volts, but be getting much less than that as the representation of current over there. The other issue is that if you're doing this for current mode applications, um, we are um, we need something called a compensating ramp. Now we have done another video uh, whereby we're going to talk about compensating ramp and car mode whereby you add a ramp with a positive slope to this in order to stop subharmonic, subharmonic oscillations. What we have done is exactly the opposite. As a result of the magnetizing current of, of this transformer, we are adding a negative ramp and therefore, instead of sharpening the slope, we are actually shallowing the slope. And that is one of the reasons why um, subharmonic oscillations in current mode happens sometimes less than 50% duty. Theoretically, it should only happen at 50% duty or above. But because we are adding this negative ramp to it, sometimes we get it at less than 50% duty. And that, of course, causes a problem. How do we go about solving this? Well, we know that a my transformer has got a certain amount of magnetizing inductance called LM. This is uh, defined in the data sheet of the, uh, of the transformer by the manufacturer. We also know that the inductance is proportional to the square of the turns ratio. So if you have got a 1 to 10 turns ratio transformer, a 1 to 50 turns ratio transformer, and 1 to 100 beg your pardon, 1 to 100 turn ratio, the magnetizing inductance of this one is going to be much, much, much higher than and these, these two. Right? And the higher the magnetizing inductance, then the lower the magnetizing current. So if you are designing a current mode power supply where your um, current that you're trying to measure is not very big and is maybe close to the amount of magnetizing current, uh, you want to pick one with a higher turns ratio or a physically bigger one. Of course, we're always short of space, so maybe it's not possible to buy a physically bigger one. But if we go for one with a higher turns ratio, hopefully we'll get enough magnetizing um, inductance to reduce the magnetizing current and therefore we don't get this shallowing, shallowing shape. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the lab and we're going to show two almost identical power supplies, one with a 1 to 50 turns ratio and one with a 1 to 100 uh, turns ratio and show how the impact of the magnetizing current of these current transformers is shallowing down the slope of the ramp that we try to measure. So um, here we are in the lab. Uh, I've got two identical boards here. Uh, the only difference between the two is that uh, one of them has got a 1 to 50 current transformer and the other one I've had to rework to make it a 1 to 100 and uh, as we discussed earlier the 1 to 50 will have a much smaller magnetizing inductance and therefore a much bigger magnetizing current and therefore I would expect if I were to compare the real current measurement with what is coming out of the current transformer in terms of the voltage that there would be a difference. Uh, I have put a uh, current probe right here so this is measuring the real inductor current uh, and that is shown with the uh, green trace over here. The yellow trace is just my PWM. This is a buck converter that is stepping down from around 10 volts down to 3.3 volts. Um, and I'm about to look at the output of my current transformer across the burden resistor. So it's the voltage representation of the current. So what the current transformer is measuring, it's a 1 to 50 transformer with a 50 ohm uh, burden resistor, therefore it's a 1 volt per amp and I should be able to superimpose the, the measurement of the current across the burden resistor with that of the green trace which is the current clamp. So I'm just going to connect my probe across what the IC, PWM IC will see. There you go. That, you can clearly see that the pink trace, which is the voltage across the burden resistor, is a lot shallower than the green trace, which is the real inductor current measurement. Again, from the scales, you can see that this one is set to one volts per amp uh, with one amp per division uh, scale. And this one is one volts, again, 
with uh, um, one volt per division scale and therefore we should be actually superimposing these two on top of each other. So I'm just going to save this pink trace into memory. Uh, memory memory 2 I'm going to save source to import there we go that is my pink trace I'm now that I've saved that into memory I'm going to quickly swap the two boards around when this one which has got a ratio of 1 to 100 current transformer and because the magnetizing current on this one is smaller I expect it to be a much better representation of the real current measurement So um, I have now swapped the two boards around uh, and I'm just going to power it up. So again, uh, the uh, yellow trace here is the um, uh, duty. Um, um, I'm just using that to trigger. The green trace is the real inductor current measurement here, right? And the pink trace is now the voltage across the burden resistor. However, now I've got a 1 to 100 um, uh, transformer with a 100 ohm burden resistor. So still it's one volt per amp and now if you look I get almost an exact beautiful replica here as you can see. Now the pink trace is on top of the green trace which means that my current measurement is accurate and therefore we have proved that the magnetizing inductance of your uh, current transformer can have a big impact on the amount of slope that you're going to have to add and in particular in current mode that could cause a problem. Hope you enjoyed uh, this video and I hope to see you at one of our workshops.